Good morning, and welcome to this service of Holy Eucharist for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost, Sunday, September 5th. A warm welcome to all of those who are joining us over Zoom, and for all of us who are present in the room as well. It's wonderful to have you all here. Everything we need for this service uh, can be found in your service leaflet, and I invite you as you are able to stand with me. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say it together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point, has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as though those who are to be judged by the law of liberty where judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, 
keep warm and eat your fill. And yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 125. Let's read it responsibly by alternate verse. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. The hills stand about Jerusalem. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just. So that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good. To those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and, and will be forever. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's crumbs, children's food, and throw it to the dogs. 
But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Take my lips, O Lord, and speak through them. Take our minds, O Lord, and think through them. Take our hearts, O Lord, and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Please be seated. There is a peculiar opportunity that presents itself from being in a congregation longer than three years, an opportunity that until now I have never enjoyed before. Because the lectionary cycle repeats itself every three years, a seated or tenured pastor like me can look back and revisit sermons and sermon notes from previous cycles. This week, as I prepared to preach, without a clear and resounding singular word from God on what to say, I took the chance to look back at my notes from the previous cycle. I asked myself, what has changed since I heard this passage last, three years ago? Looking back to my sermon notes from this Sunday three years ago, I found notes from a Bible study with a friend of mine who now serves in the Diocese of Kentucky. It was a study of this passage from the Gospel of Mark. And she was planning to preach a sermon she called Syrophoenician Lives Matter. I remember what a powerful witness this was. I also remember that I didn't have anywhere near the courage to preach that sermon here. You see, that sermon focused on the racial realities and the tensions of privilege that are present in this passage. The way she read this passage and preached on it was a sermon about how Jesus, a man of privilege, was chastised and changed by a less privileged person, the Syrophoenician woman, who helped Jesus expand his understanding of who can be the recipient of God's healing power. Now, this was a powerful sermon about Jesus becoming a subversive witness to God's grace. The way that Jesus in this passage and in others uses the limited privileges that he enjoyed to make the community more inclusive, more loving, more generous for those who are traditionally marginalized. The way that Jesus, even in his refusal at first to listen to this woman, amplifies her witness to her suffering and then heals her daughter. The way this woman from outside the community expands Jesus' understanding of his own mission and ministry and thereby opens up the kingdom of God to all the marginalized everywhere, not to a particularly privileged ethnic or religious group. And you can argue all you want about why this is in the Bible, but you can't argue that it isn't present. That sermon invited its listeners to ask themselves, how are we becoming subversive witnesses to God's grace? How are we 
using what privileges and opportunities we have to advance the reign of God? How are we allowing ourselves and our understanding of our lives to be changed if and when we discover that the ways that we are living are inconsistent with the gospel witness? It invites us to ask ourselves how we accept being challenged and corrected and yet remain in communion with God and with one another. One could make the point that, this, that the timing of this reading is unfortunate given that it so often falls on an end of summer holiday weekend and is therefore less likely to be heard. But perhaps it's better to be thankful that this story exists at all in scripture. It could easily have been removed from the biblical witness for the ways it causes us to think about Jesus, or it could have been overlooked by the editors of the Gospel of Mark. But it wasn't, and it's here. So that sermon, while extremely challenging, still has legs to stand on and room to grow. Because even though many of us have taken steps to work towards building the beloved community that Dr. King envisioned and that our presiding bishop has outlined in his ministry, steps like speaking the truth about our experience of race and equity through programs like Sacred Ground or looking with love at the world as it is by opening our eyes and hearts to the challenges of race that still confront us or seeking to take reparative steps in our lives that heal divisions like working to expand and restore our own people of color burying ground. Even despite all of this work that we have accomplished together over the last several years, there is still probably a word in this sermon that we could stand to hear. But does that same sermon resonate as it once did? Is that the word that we need to hear this year and this Sunday? Well, maybe instead of that sermon, which it would take serious courage to preach, maybe there is a different word that needs to be spoken. A pastoral word about the persistence of hope in difficult times. See, if we ignore the issues of race, gender, and privilege in this passage, we find that it is also a passage about finding and resting a blessing from the challenges that face us in life. This passage, while clearly a reflection on race and privilege, is also two incredible stories of courageous people looking to Jesus for healing amidst the challenges of their lives and not giving up. So another sermon might focus on maintaining a hopeful posture even amidst the difficulties of life. So maybe this is the word of God that God is inviting us to hear. With COVID-19 still lingering and not resolving as we once hoped, with dangers to kids and the vaccinated on the rise, I know I need a word of hope to buoy my spirits. Surely with our experience of disasters, one after another, the widespread destruction of Ida, the fruitless but stressful preparation for Henri, the reality of our partners in Haiti's misery from the earthquake storms and political disaster, the flood of mud that still lingers in my basement, I'm still waiting and watching and hoping for God's blessing amidst all the challenges. And for all of us who are exhausted by our daily reality, the promise of rescue and healing from Jesus is not an empty one. I know that in my prayer, I keep seeking a blessing from Jesus. I know that, like the biblical character Jacob before me, if I have not yet found God's blessing in the midst of these moments, my wrestling with God is not yet over. So maybe we need to be encouraged to persist in hope and faith despite all that we see around us. Wouldn't that be a comforting sermon? Finally, there is still another word waiting to be preached and waiting to be heard that comes to us from our reading from the letter of James with its resounding insistence that faith without works is dead. Once you've heard that passage, 
Can anyone really unhear it? What a challenge it is to all of us who think of our faith first as a personal matter or divorce it from our social realities. Who can't hear and recognize the admonition not to let gold rings and fine clothes determine our value or poverty and dirty clothes obscure the value of others? This passage is a powerful challenge not to let our faith remain just a philosophical or theological ascent that gilds our otherwise beautiful lives, but instead to allow our faith to have legs and arms and hands that move us into action for the poor. Perhaps this sermon is an invitation for all of us to renew our proximity to those who are suffering. Perhaps this sermon is an opportunity to hear God invite us to do the work of Christian discipleship, not just rest in faith. That sermon would invite us to remember that faith has no expression, that has no expression is empty. Faith must always lead to action. And what kind of action? Action consistent with the witness of Jesus. Giving ourselves away including the excluded, caring for others, healing and redeeming the sins that hurt other people. So what is the sermon we need to hear? Honestly, I can't tell. Sometimes the challenges to hear, receive, and speak God's truth are just too overwhelming. Or maybe we are being asked if we have the courage to hear all three. Is our discipleship as a community generous enough to recognize that all three sermons need to be heard at once? Some of us need our privileges challenged. Others need to hear a word of hope. Others need to be reminded that faith must always lead to action. Maybe we need to be reminded that in any church that follows our subversive, loving, and challenging Messiah, all three need to be heard at the same time. But what kind of preacher would do that to their congregation? It may just be too much to bear. So instead, let us just rest in the comfort and challenge of our collect instead. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For just as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
let us, <clears throat> let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. I ask your prayers for Lawrence, Bill, Daniel, and Geraldine, our bishops, Gideon and Mary Beth, our clergy, Michaud, our Haitian partner priest, and for all clergy and other ministers. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. I ask your prayers for Joe, our president, Kathy, our governor, and for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. I ask your prayers for Israel and Palestine and for peace in the Holy Lands. I ask your prayers for the people and nation of Haiti as they recover from the recent earthquake. I ask your prayers for Afghanistan and those seeking safety for their families. I ask your prayers for those impacted by Hurricane Ida. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. I ask your prayers for our partner school and church, St. Matthias and De Lande, Haiti. We give you thanks for the wedding of Catherine Harper and Jack Vines, which was celebrated last week in Brit uh, Britannia or somewhere in Ohio. <clears throat> We give thanks for the many decades and service of Gary Knapp at the Cold Spring Harbor Beach Club as he prepares to celebrate his retirement today. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. I ask your prayers for our armed forces and all those who serve our nation overseas. And Shirley Baker, Leon Balaki, Eileen Bellini, Caroline Kassler, Chloe Clancy, Ali Nick and Charles Culber, Elisa Dean, Luke Demarest, Nancy Fowler, Angelina Rose Freda, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzale, Vanessa Gulo, George Harstead, Charles Hertz, Carol Jameson Hildebrand, Evelyn Hiller, Edith Hoffman, Nancy Hussey, Ruth Knudsen, Marie Lee, Edward Martinez, Virginia Martinez, Una McHugh, China Meyer, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Alex Patterson, Peter Puelco, Joan Penrose Borum, Luna Bell Perone, Robert Rimels, Raphael Roper, Jack Santaniello, Catherine Simon, Joan Small, Helen Colgate-Smith, Carol Walker, and Connie. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, particularly Fred Irwin and Janet Clark Irwin, who were buried from St. John's yesterday, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another that all we do affects, for good or ill, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers that arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ, 
He's really happy with you. He's got his head. He's really good. He's Peter well read. <laughs> He's with you. He's Harry Howard. He's really good to see you. Peace, Bill. <laughs> He's with well read. Which one? Peace be with you. Uh, welcome and. Um, oh, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> welcome and uh, please feel free to be seated. Uh, sorry, but pulling my head back together. First, I just want to say uh, how great it is to see you all. Um, I joined you last week um, from wherever, Ohio, which is Brattonall, Ohio. It's actually uh, outside Cleveland, and I think Doug Fox uh, knows it well. I don't know if Doug's on the stream, uh, but I think Doug uh, maybe grew up near there. So he, when I told him I was going, he knew all about it. So Brattonall, Ohio. Um, I was there. I joined you for worship, and I, I just want to say to anybody who's watching on the stream, um, I noticed this last week that they could probably see Scott and, 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 and uh, Ms. Evans here, Dr. Rain, and they can probably see Kathy, uh, but nobody else. So I just, for those on the stream, everything past this point is completely full. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's standing room only. You, you can't even imagine. There's people hanging from the balconies. Uh, just, everybody gives this space, you know, just for courtesy, in case you want to join us. Um, so, um, I also want to share um, that Mary Beth uh, is in my thoughts and in our prayers. Mary Beth this morning is uh, filling in um, at two churches. You may be aware, uh, and for those watching at home who are considering a vocation, there is a serious clergy shortage in the Episcopal Church and in the Diocese of Long Island. There are currently about 17 open congregations looking for rectors, uh, not to mention anybody looking for assistance. So Mary Beth is out at two congregations this morning. First is the Church of the Advent in Westbury where our good friend Eddie Aline used to be the rector, and he's moved on to the Cathedral of the Incarnation, and at St. Thomas's in Floral Park. Um, they're both being served by one priest who is on vacation. So Mary Beth is covering both of those churches this morning, and we uh, send those churches our love and prayers as well as our curate, Mary Beth Mills Curran. So uh, please keep Mary Beth in your thoughts. It'll be fun to hear uh, what her experiences of those two very different congregations was like in coming weeks. So look forward to that. This coming week, there's a lot going on in our common life. Um, perhaps the headline is that next Sunday is our Welcome Home Sunday, our Kickoff Sunday, and our Holy Smokes Barbecue, which we're trying to do with all the COVID precautions we can. So please consider joining us next Sunday to kick off the school year, to bless backpacks, to hear our choirs return, to sing joyfully, and then to have lunch together outside where we will honor Josie Greco um, our lovely and incredible children's worship leader who has um, retired from her work at St. John's after decades of service. So please join us for that uh, to honor Josie and to be with one another. It would really be lovely to bring the team and family back together uh, who have been so distant for so long. And we'll need these pews, I would assume. So, uh, so please consider joining us for that. Next Sunday, of course, is September 12th, which means that Saturday is September 11th. Uh, it is the 20th anniversary of the attacks, 9-11 uh, attacks on New York City and Pennsylvania and the Pentagon. And we've invited the congregation over the last several weeks to share with us, the clergy and pastoral leadership, names of people who are from your life or your connections who died on or as a result of the September 11th attacks. Many uh, observances this year will remember everybody. Um, in fact, our local observance of the firehouse will remember all those from our region who died on September 11th, but we want to gather on the 11th at 5 p.m. and lift up in prayer all those known to us and dear to us uh, who died. We've heard from some of you, uh, but we have obviously a few more days uh, for the rest of you to send us the names of those who died on the 11th or as a result of the September 11th attacks. Please consider shooting me an email or Andrew or Mary Beth. We're all working on one document together so you can send it to anyone but we sure would love uh, to be able to lift up in prayer those who are loved and known by this community um, on the anniversary of september 11th so let's see september 11th the 12th there's a lot going on in our music life including the return of all of the choirs which there are opportunities for anyone i guess age four or above and june kim do you want to say anything about uh, that or the session you're holding after this service of course Good morning. My name is Jun Kim, Director of Music at St. John's. 
So good to see all of you today. Um, the music ministry, the, all the choirs rehearsals starts this week, uh, specifically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as well as Sunday. There are, I believe, nine groups in total. So you're welcome to join multiple. <laughs> um, if you refer to the uh, St. John's newsletter, it details all the groups and the, uh, what's involved for those groups as well and the rehearsal times. Um, I believe these are some significant changes. So after the rehearsal today, service, in, right? after the service today, after Carol's fine postlude, we'll be holding a question and answer session for music ministry right here to, uh, to address some of, some of the questions that you may have regarding the music ministry. Thanks, June. Even despite all the prayers and the, um, in the prayers of the people, we neglected to include a prayer of thanksgiving today uh, for the 95th birthday of Ruth Knudsen, in whose honor the altar flowers are given to the glory of God. So Ruth, uh, if you're watching this, or her family, if you're with us, know that Ruth is surrounded in our prayers of thanksgiving, uh, and we give thanks for 95 amazing years uh, of, of birth, uh, of life uh, for, for Ruth. And in fact, this week also is a banner birthday for Nancy Hussey, who I think turns 98, uh, 99 on Tuesday? Wednesday, okay, I was close on both counts, 99, Wednesday. So can keep Nancy in your prayers, especially as she recovers from illness uh, at home. I think that's everything, that's certainly plenty. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings and come into his courts with praise. I invite you, as you are able, to stand with me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. 
and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed John, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, life is short and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walked away with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.